Hello. How you doing? Welcome back. Or if this is your first time here, welcome to my bedroom. And tonight, I'm having a little bedtime talk about a big word. Yay! I get to use a big word. Yay! I like to use big words. It makes me feel smart. Now, my big word for today is... Ready? It's hedonistic habituation. And I think that's a cool big word. And it is hedonistic habituation versus savoring. I want you to know about this. You're going to be happier. Yes, you are. You're just going to leave this video and for the rest of your life, because you know this, you're going to be a happier person. Isn't that cool? So let's get, let's get into it. Let's start chewing on the meat of this. Um, Hedonistic habituation is how quickly you can get over something good that happens to you. For example, um, you lottery winners. Let's talk about them for a minute. A lot of lottery winners, you will ask them, you know, how happy are you now that you won the lottery? And not on those TV shows that are really commercials to make you play the lottery, but they make it look like a TV show. Not on that. But, you know, like real science here, like the real hardcore stuff here that the universities do. Uh, lottery winners aren't any happier one year after the fact than people who've been paralyzed from the neck down. That's pretty scary. But, yeah, so they win all this money and they go, Yay! I won! I won! I won! I won! And very quickly they go, Yeah, yeah, I got money. Next. Uh, this will happen. Somebody will get a new car. Ah, I got a new car! And then next month you say, Hey, you got a new car? And they go, Yeah, whatever. I wonder what Bill's up to. Um, yeah, it's about how you get something really cool and good or something fun happened to you and how you get over it. Um, so that it's not really bringing you any joy anymore. Um, and that is versus savoring. Um, savoring can be, you've heard, well, of course you know about savoring your food, where you close your eyes and you just taste how delicious it is and you savor every morsel, which is a good thing to do. Did I tell you I had a cold? I can't remember. I have a cold and I'm going to cough once in a while and I'm sorry. And there's an explanation how this tragedy befell me in the last video. <coughs> but anyway, sorry about that. Just is, I guess. So anyway, um, savoring can be, um, say you have a baby and you look at this precious gift God gave you and it's so beautiful and wonderful and stuff. Um, can you still look at that child 16, 18 years later and just look at the smooth curve of their cheek and want to touch it just like the baby cheek and get the same thrill? Um, just anything good that happens to you. Can you um, re-experience uh, that joy, um, fresh and wonderful, like, like it was just brand new? Um, sometimes if we do take the time, like we would savor perhaps a piece of chocolate, which I am fond of doing, um, you know, you savor, I think it's good for you. I think chocolate's good for you, okay, and there's a lot of studies coming out saying that. Anyway, so, you know, I savor a piece of chocolate or I savor a person as if they were just brand new to just remember how wonderful that is and concentrate and just feel the joy in that instead of getting over it to focus on something else. Go, oh yeah, I see that all the time. It's nothing special. To even savor something as wonderful as a tree. Imagine you'd never seen a tree before and somebody showed you one and said, somebody created this. You'd think it's the most magnificent work of art ever. You, you, you would. You'd say this is like art. So, you'd say, somebody would say, yeah, and it's alive. No way. So cool. So savoring is where to increase your level of happiness, you look at things like they're brand new again, and you don't take them for granted. Now this is where depression can really get a hold of people, and it can wreck your mood, it can wreck your life. It's, there's an opposite to that, 
where um, you don't get over the bad things that happen to you. Like the good things that happen to you, you know, yeah, you, but the bad things that happen to you, you know, you keep that as fresh and new as if it was yesterday. Like my sister, oh, don't get me started. I hope she doesn't watch this. Well, I got four sisters. They won't know which one. Oh, God, they will. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, they'll know which one. Anyhow, I love you, Rainy. I love you. But, yeah, say somebody, a family member, something that did you wrong sometime. And uh, every time you talk about it, it comes up again. And, and you keep, you, you're almost savoring your bitterness about it, and you want to really chase that. So you're not getting hedonistic habituation about your traumas or your difficulties. You can't say, oh, well, that was a long time ago, I'm over it. Uh, but you can say it about something good that happened to you. Um, and then, yeah, so you're savoring, you know, really, your misery, really. And I know there is a school of thought in modern psychology that believes if you don't have these feelings, um, that you'll become sick. Um, the statistics on this are, like, let's get into the science about it. Like, sorry, Freud, but let's get properly scientific here. Um, the statistics on this is, is it doesn't matter whether or not you express the feelings, whether or not they'll make you sick. Speaking of which, who am I to talk, huh? Hold it. <coughs> I feel like such a hypocrite. Oh, God, don't hate me. Anyway. Am I going to do it again? <coughs> okay. So, anyhow. Yeah, it's not um, whether or not you get sick by expressing the feelings or not expressing them. You get sick by having the feelings in the first place. Um, you can't help but have feelings. They are human. But, I know I've been over this before, uh, when you do get them, some things it's good to just get over real quick and just to say, okay, it happened. Um, know the darkness, follow the light. Yes, this happened, it sucks. I didn't like it, but it's over. And you know what? Forget it. You know, um, and if it does come up, spot it and say, you know, I guess a lot of people make mistakes. There's times I've done mean things to people. So, you know, that's another thing. Jump and spot. I start working myself up, savoring my anger and resentment about someone. I can spot myself. Stop spot, whatever. I guess that's each one's backwards. Anyway, now I'm confused because I'm blonde. Anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, you can spot that <laughs> and say, you know, I am not going to savor and relish every moment of, of my anger towards this person. And I am also going to realize that there's times in my life where maybe I've done things that aren't very nice or aren't very good myself. And um, I'm going to forgive myself and forgive that other person and follow the light and start saying, well, this is what's good. Um, look for something you like. I always divert myself with something I like. Um, chocolate. It's good for you. Did I mention that? Do I have Alzheimer's? Am I talking to myself? Do I answer my own questions? Maybe. Maybe I just ask them without answering them. That could be. Am I losing it? Possibly. Anyway, back to you. You're what's important, the viewer. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Um, so, while you're walking around your life, try to savor all the good things. Don't get over them too quick. You get a triumph for something good that happens, celebrate inside yourself. You can give yourself a mini party inside yourself anytime you want. You can be at the bus stop and say, you know what? I got a good grade at school. I'm going to have a little mini party inside myself for that. And yeah, don't get over it too quick. Oh, sure, it might be uncool. Cool people get over things quick. Yeah, it's all right to be uncool. It's cool to be uncool. Party in your head about it. And the things that are really bad, um, go, yeah, it happened. It sucked. You know what? I'm going to go focus on something I like because I want to be happy. And I don't want to play games with my mental health. And I, I don't, I just want to be a good person. And, and uh, I, like, I like this way better. That works for me. So, yeah, there you go. So, remember, um, do not get habitu 
hedonistically habituated to the good things and don't savor your misery and uh, really there's not I, I don't know this is just me but I've never found an incredibly huge amount of virtue in licking picking open my own wounds um, for self-pity reasons or even to get people to feel sorry for me I find no virtue in that um, I know some people I used to think I used to think that it made me deep and special and like I had some kind of special deep feelings and, and that I wasn't shallow um, but I tell you something I love deeply now so I don't think I'm shallow at all because I love very very deeply um, and yeah I find no virtue in it um, I find nothing there's nothing useful there nothing good there nothing that helps and young viewers again um, you, I tucked you in once already I like to tuck people in I, my kids are all growing up anyway uh, yeah I guess they're just gonna do that but I'm gonna tuck you in again because I do I love you there, there's so many out there too that I I talk to some of you but there's so many out there too that I don't have contact with but I know you're there I know you're there and I know you're okay inside and I love you I do and uh, you're special and perfect and wonderful just the way you are and you're just gonna keep getting better every day just believe in yourself believe in your ability to heal and grow and get strong and uh, yeah it's gonna be good it's okay if I was to have a mantra I guess that's the one that I use in my head it's okay yeah it's good you know it just is so yeah, I guess that's it. I don't want to just babble on endlessly for no apparent reason. I hope you got something out of this that's useful. And yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you again soon. Night night.